So in this seventh video, we are looking at the effects. We're not going to be talking about the individual effects and the plugins that exist within the X32. We're probably going to be looking at the options available on this screen and some basic routing. So we have our home screen which shows us our eight effects units. Effects one to four are effects returns or inserts, which means that you can send multiple fusing as an effects return. You can set up a general reverb or delay or parallel compressor and send an amount of signal to it from various channels and then pull that back through an effects return or you can use them as inserts. So that means that they get inserted within the signal path of the channel itself. So for example, the inserts are usually located after the dynamics, but you can chuck them pre EQ or dynamics. And it gives you the ability to have specific plugins on that channel, but use them sparingly because you've only got eight channels or eight effects units. Sorry, effects units five to eight are insert only, and out of the box, these are set up as graphics. I've changed my settings so that effects unit eight is set to left and right. That allows me to tune the PA. I know the left and right out main channel has the opportunity to change, uh, to have a graphic EQ on it as its main EQ, but I've sided against that because it gives me the ability to tune the EQ this way and then I can make overall changes using the six band parametric that exists within it. So if we're looking at where we want these effects to return, currently effects unit one is set up to bus 13 left and right, um, and then it goes through all the way to 16 on effects units one and four. And then effects units five to eight, these shows the, the insert locations. So if we wanted to change our effects return locations we can just select those and that's you can do that any way you like to do it so the top one which would be left is the far left encoder the encoder in from that would do the right and then you have an option to mute those as well so as we move through you can see using the layers we can actually move through those and make those changes. You can actually select the type of effect. So if I want to change that reverb to so a sub octave for whatever reason I could do that. And if I wanted to get directly into the channel that I'm looking at or the effects unit I'm looking at, say I want effects unit six, I can hit edit and it will take me straight to it. And then hit that button again, and it's effects home. So that's the main routing page for the effects. And then we have our eight effects, which run in the next tabs. Most of these will have two layers of the um, options that are available within them. You can see you can access those with these layers. And then we can make our changes so if we want to change say for example the K in this vintage room we can do that so that happens all the way through but all the time you've got the option option to go straight home when we're looking at the graphics we have um, more options I'm going to go into these in a little bit of detail 
we've got the opportunity to have a um, bar or spectrum analyzer. So you can see that, that how that changes the colors. As that sweeps up, there's nothing going through the channel, so you won't see anything. We can change our analyzer to be post REQ, and we can copy it between A and the B. So the what we have here is a dual EQ. So at the moment, it's affecting the insert for bus one. You can see here that it's two individual channels. But if I change it up, you can see that we've moved to bus one. So you can actually copy settings across. You have a reset all, which is really useful, and then we have our effects home. This button here means that we can actually adjust on faders. So at the moment, we are adjusting four bands of that graphic just using these pots, which can be, if you're ringing out monitors and the way that they squeal, this could be too slow for you. So we press this and it activates the right hand bank of eight faders. Um, I'll show you that shortly when we go through the routing. Utilizing this graphic on fader is really useful. So if we hit this, you can see that we're now controlling a bank of eight as opposed to a bank of four with our pots. We're using these eight faders. So it means that we can work quite quickly and make any drastic EQ effects for that particular mix bus graphic. We can reset them by hitting mute and then to scroll along you just scroll where you want to scroll. That graphic on fader will stay active irrespective of which effects units you want to go to. So you'll see that if we go to five and then four, let's scroll along. Five, six, seven, eight. You'll see that they all exist and they are active. So I'll just turn that off. So if we're looking at sending effects to one of the review of units in banks one to four, we treat it the same way that we would treat a piece of outboard in one of the physical insert slots. So we send, just set that back, 13. So we would send information or the signal from our channels to the effects bus that we're dealing with. So if we look at effects slot one, that's bus 13, which is this one. So we're sending information to that channel for it to go through the plugin here, and then we're looking to return that into our effects returns, which exist here. So bus 13 comes into effects one left and right, 14 into two left and right, 15, three left and right, 16, four left and right. So if we go from the beginning, if I select the bus channel and then go sends on faders, you can see that I'm already sending some information via these channels. That is now going into the effects unit and our send level is set at unity so we can change that so we can send more or less signal overall. That's going through the effects unit and then we need that to return on these effects returns. Top tip, always make sure you press this before you do anything else. I've done it a lot where I've tried to affect the mix and I've just changed the sense. So our return volume is now up. So you can have a mix of signals being sent to here via your sends on fader. And then from this unit, the amount of effect coming in 
is then passed through the effect and it is returned on the channel which is dedicated to. As you can see, that is effect one. We go across, so it's effects two, three, four, which gives us our four effects returns. If we're looking to do an insert within these, so if we decide, if we go back to our main page, we decide that we're going to insert, we're going to make this reverb and insert, for example. So I've made that um, an insert, or I've made one half of it an insert. We'll leave that as 13. So that means that now I've made that an insert, we're only receiving the affected signal from bus 13 into effects 1 right. But if I go to my main channel, strip, I can, and one of my main input channels, so I've got insert already selected, I can then go into my config and I can define what effects unit that is going to be. So I can pick effects one left, which is going to be my insert. So that means that I can have half of one of the effects units as inserts doing whatever I want it to do, whether that's parallel compression or reverb on a particular vocal, whatever you want to do. So it's quite flexible that way. I'm just going to change that back because I will forget to change it later. There we go. That covers our main effects routing.